In this presentation, we will enter a transaction related to restricted government grants. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our not-for-profit company dashboard. We're going to head on over to Excel just to see what our objective will be within Excel. We're on the fourth tab. So we're going to be on the fourth tab. We're looking at uh, 2C here, 2C, which is going to be the government grant used for education. So we're going to have a government grant money coming in. It's going to be from the government. It will have a restriction on it. That restriction then being used for education. So that means that cash is going to be going up. If we think, think about this from a journal entry standpoint, the transactions affected would be cash then increasing the other side basically income type of account for a not-for-profit similar to income for a for-profit contributions going up however the contributions having restrictions and therefore going up with restrictions so if we were to post that out then we know that the cash account would then be increasing we have an increase to the cash account and then we have an increase to an income type of account however with our contributions income type of account it's going to be a restricted item so we have a restricted item here so in this uh, setting, we see that with two different accounts. Uh, if we see that in our profit and loss type of report, statement of activities, then uh, we will see that information broken out in columns. So here's the columns uh, with donor restrictions and without. So our objective when we put this into QuickBooks is to have a system where we can have you know, one kind of transaction that we can do this in and then break out these two columns which we're gonna use the classes uh, to do. Then we also have the restrictions. We have the items with restrictions here and we might further want some more information on that. So we, we might want more information, which we can again use the classes field to give subclasses to help us with that and then formatting reports to keep like simplified types of reports and then added more detail uh, when necessary and or we'll also demonstrate a method we could use with the sub customers to track that as well so those are going to be the tools that uh, we will use that's what our objective will be back to quickbooks online first thing we're going to set up is the customer we want to set up the customer so we can use that feature in order to help us to track the information we're going to use the sub customers to do so so i'm going to do that by going to the sales item we're going to go to the sales tab on the left hand side in the hamburger and then we want to go to the customers tab up top. So we're going to be in the customers tab. And then if we scroll down within the customers tab, we have uh, the items here. Notice we have the restricted time and then we have the pledger within the restricted time item. Now we're going to have another restriction for government grants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the customer. So we're going to set up a new customer. So I'm going to go up top, set up a new customer. And this is going to be like the parent customer and I'm going to call it uh, government grants government grants and then I'm gonna I'm gonna say education restriction so that's gonna be the restriction on it so I'm gonna and I'm gonna make that the parent account so I'm gonna go ahead and save that then I'm gonna go back to the customers tab and within the customers tab I'm gonna scroll down and now we'll see our government grants now we're gonna ha have a subcategory within the government grant. So I'm gonna go back up top and this would be the specific government grant that we would have. So I'm gonna put this into the subcategory of government grants for education that we need to use for education in general. So I'm gonna say we need a new customer and this is gonna be a specific uh, government grant. And I'm, I'm just using a generic name here, government grant but we could put a more specific name within there if we so choose it's going to be in a sub customer a sub customer this time of the government grants and then if i have a specific name i don't want to bill it with the parent account i could then bill this customer separately so then it'll show up in the subcategory of government grants so we can kind of group them together when we when we start to generate and make our reports yet still be able to bill them and see this information separately uh, by the actual uh, company if we have multiple different kinds of government grants that would go into the subcategory. So then I'm gonna say save this and let's go back to our customers again. So we'll go back to our customers and then if we scroll back down, so now we have the government grants for restricted education and a government grant here. Now, note again, if you had multiple government grants, you could put it into this, this category and then it's gonna show up, it's gonna show up on the report when we run the report by customer and it'll break out these government grants and then the total for all the grants within it 
and you can imagine having multiple grants uh, within it which have that, uh, that education restriction for it. Another way we could track this is with the class feature. To do that, we're gonna go to the cog up top and we'll go into the lists and we want to go to all lists. What we're gonna do is set up a subclass once again. So we're gonna go to the classes down below. So we're gonna open up our classes. I'm gonna close up the hamburger. We have a restricted items and we have restricted by time. And now we're gonna have a restriction by the, edu by the grants for education. Grants for education. So I'm gonna say new, gonna make a subclass here. And this is going to be grants, or we could say gov grants education, something like that. And then I'm going to make this a subclass, and we're going to make it a subclass of the restricted item here. So it's going to be once again within the restricted item. So we're going to say save. And then you can imagine what's going to happen here when we run the profit and loss by class. We're going to have restricted and unrestricted, and then the detail within the unrestricted and the detail uh, within the restricted items being broken out. So let's take a look at that now. So now we're going to actually process the report. So we're going to hit the hamburger up top. We're going to go to the plus button. We're going to use our sales receipt, which is kind of like our standard form when we get, when we get money. So money's coming in, kind of our donation type form. And then we're going to say this is going to go to the, to the government grants. So we want to pick up then... We're going to pick our government grants, the education restricted item, so the sub-customer here, and we're going to be picking that item that we set up in the customer field. If we had the email, then of course we could set up the email. We're going to be making this on 010420, so 010420. And the payment method, I'm going to say payment method, uh, I'm going to say it's an electronic transfer, so I'm just going to say uh, cash for the electronic transfer instead of a, a credit card reference number and then it's going to go into which account for the deposit i'm going to be putting this into an, and we can put it into either the uh, checking account or we might want to put it into the undeposited funds if we're going to have multiple funds that we're going to then put into the bank so that's been our custom so i'm going to pick the undeposited funds here so that we can put them into the bank in the same format that they will be showing on the bank statement the service date is also going to be uh let's see 010420 and then the product we're going to set up another product so i'm going to call it uh, government grants for the for the item here so this is going to be the item that we're going to set up i'm going to add a new item so we'll say new item it's going to be a service type of item so we'll add the service type of item i'm just going to call it a uh, gov government grant and then I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to say, let's copy that. And then I'm going to put that down here in the description. So we'll put that in the description. And now we could put this into the restricted income account uh, here. Uh, we might want to put another income account if we want a little bit more detail. So I wouldn't put it. Do not put another income account for every type of grant that you have. That would not be good. But you might want to distinguish on the income statement in another income type of account government grants or possibly federal government versus state government grants in other words the overarching category of the grants so again you're, you're not really tracking each individual grant because each individual grant you're going to be tracking with the use of of the subclasses in the fields that we're going to have the class fields as well as the sub customers that's how we're going to track multiple grants if you have multiple government grants uh, we could track it in that fashion uh, within and that means on the income statement you don't want to do that you don't want to set up another income statement account typically for each individual grant however you might want a category type of, a, of account saying hey these are the government grants these are the federal grants these are the state grants and so on and so forth so that's what we'll do here i'm going to say all right i want to i want to add another account for just the subcategory of government grants so that uh, and this will be helpful hopefully to the people on the board of directors they don't want to see each if you they'll be overwhelmed if you if you have a bunch of different grants from different government organizations but if you say hey these are the grants from the government versus uh, other forms of income in a subcategory that could be useful information and not too overwhelming so in any case we want an income type of account and then i'm going to say it's going to be other primary income and I'm just going to call it government grants. So government grants. You may want like state government and fed government if, if those are going to, if you have both of those, right? And you could distinguish between those two. But I'm just going to say government grants for our practice problem here. 
and then I'm gonna say save and close so there's our item so then I'm gonna say save and then the government grants are here so whenever we use that item it's gonna be going to that government grants income type of account let's pick up our amount then let's pick up our amount going back to Excel to check that out so if I scroll up in Excel we're on this one that's gonna be the 159,000 so 159 so we'll say quantity one 159,000 and then I'm gonna put it into the class of that grant that we set up so we're gonna put it into the class of the government grant and there we have it so what's this gonna do when we record it it's gonna go into undeposited funds until we then transfer it into the bank then the other side is going to be driven by the by the item here the item is pointing to the income account we just set up for government grants so it's going to be going into the income account of government grants when we run a profit and loss by class we'll be able then to see under the restricted items the subclass now of the government grants which is going to be increasing on the income side of things as well and we can also run a report by customer where we could see the grouping of uh, the restricted customers under the subcategory of restrictions and then see this item in government grants in the restricted customer item allowing us to track further uh, those restricted items and getting more detail on them so let's go ahead and save this so let's say save and send i'm going to say save and close let's go save and close and then let's open up our reports we're going to go back to our reports on the left hand side so then we're going to open up the balance sheet. So here is the balance sheet that we opened up. And if we go up top, I'm just going to change the date range. So let's make sure it's in uh, 2020, 010120 to 123120. We'll go ahead and run that report. I'm going to duplicate this report up top, going up top, right clicking on that tab up top and duplicating that tab. Then we're going to go back to the tab to the left. We're going to go down to the reports once again, open up that other favorite report, that being the P&L, the profit and loss, the income statement. I'm just going to open up the standard P&L profit and loss, and then we'll make the adjustment for the profit and loss by class and the profit and loss by customer. So there we have it. I'm going to scroll up top. I'm going to change the dates up top from 010120 to 123120. We're going to go ahead and run that report. So now this information we put in place, if I go to the balance sheet, we have increase. I'm going to close the hamburger here. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up a little bit to get this up to like that 125. That's where I like to be at that 125. Then I'm going to scroll down in, in the undeposited funds. We should have an increase, which is going to be down here. So it hasn't gone into the checking account. We put it into that clearing account so that we can group it together and then put it into the checking account. Now, again, if it's a grant, it may have gone directly into our checking account with an electronic transfer or, or you know, we might be able to put that directly into the checking account. But we're just going to practice this going through the undeposited funds because that's often something that confuses people to that added step and it's useful in some cases. So there we have that item. And then if I go back up top, we go back to our balance sheet. The other side's gonna be on the P&L, the profit and loss. So if we go to the profit and loss report, close up the old hamburger. We now have the income account with the government grants. So there's the government grant. If we go into that, uh, 159, there we have it. So then I'm gonna go back up top, go back to our income account. So again, just note that you, you want to have not too many income accounts up here. So remember, you may, you may want a category for government grants in the income account, that's not too bad. If I was if I was someone on the board and I was looking at this, I might want to break out between the government grants and uh, and the unrestricted other unrestricted items and the restricted items, right? I might want that. However, I don't want every government type grant. If you have multiple government grants on the income statement, that's not where to put that. It'll just muddy the waters. It'll make people's eyes roll over, and it's going to confuse things greatly. You just want the group. And then you can go into the more detail and you can go into the more detail with other tools, such as we can look at this uh, report by class. So let's go to the drop down up top total and then we're gonna make this by class now. So we'll take this by class and then run that report. So now uh, within the restricted items, we have the government grants, right? So here we have the government grants and then the time restrictions, we have the time restrictions and the uh, and then the total restricted items. So so note here again, this gets a little bit muddy because what we would like to do if I go back on over to uh, Excel, 
we'd like to see in, in a simple format this statement of activities basically breaking out the restricted and unrestricted and then giving more detail which is a little bit more difficult to do notice when we because if we go back up top notice we can't collapse these columns like we'd kind of like to see I can't basically say hey, I just want to see the total restricted and the total unrestricted in this format however we can easily do that in Excel so we can use the filter items but even if we filter them it's still going to show the content that within the parent uh, class with that's going to be active so it's still going to show up a few columns here and therefore in order to adjust this or trim this down we can do that pretty easily within Excel so for example if we take a look at this now we see that we're at the 146 700 if we then go in then to the balance sheet we're at the 146 700 now what if you wanted to, to generate this report say hey I, what I really want to see is just the total restricted and total unrestricted to match uh, this item to match some a report such as this and then give more detail about what types of restrictions we have and then we can give someone some a report like this which will, could make their eyes roll over right but we only want to give this report to somebody that <laughs> that uh, that's ready for it right so we first want to give a, a more simplified report if possible typically so what we're going to do then is what another th way we can deal with this is say i'm just going to export this report to excel export it to excel and then we will open up the excel file so we'll open up this file here and then you can modify your report in here pretty easily it's, it's a little bit of, of a cumbersome thing but not too bad right and what you can do i'm going to go i'm going to click this i'll do this fast and we'll do this again later i'll take a look at the reports later on how we can format this uh, in, in, in more detail so i'm going to go to the home tab alignment i'm going to remove the merged cells here i'm going to remove the merged cells because that makes it easier to delete some columns and remove the merged cells and then what we want is this restricted column Notice it has a formula in it right here. It has a formula. So what, what I'd like to do is, is just have that column. Now I could delete these columns, but it's gonna ruin the formula. So I could, I could hard code the formula or I could just use a hiding feature. So what I'm gonna do is just say, I'm gonna go from column B to column to this column here. And I'd just like to hide those. I wish I could collapse them because you can in, in uh, QuickBooks desktop, you can actually collapse the subclasses but in any case we're just going to say I'm going to right click here and then hide those columns so did it do it right click and hide those columns and then I'm going to go to here I'm going to go to the these items and say hide hide these and then we have the total uh, total unrestricted and total restricted. So it takes a little bit and notice I have this not specified. These are the expenses. We're gonna break them out to restricted and unrestricted at a future point. So once we do that, you will no longer have this column as well. And so we'll be able to hide that column. And then you'll just have these two columns and the total. So it takes a little bit of work to do that in Excel to export it and you can't collapse it in the online version like you can uh, in the desktop, but that's not too difficult to do. And then if you want to expand these again, you can expand them across here, merge the cells. I like to, instead of merging, right clicking here and using another feature because the merging kind of messes things up sometimes. So I like to go to edit uh, the cells and then just uh, use the alignment tab to say, I want to align horizontal across the selected cells and then say okay and that makes it centered without like merging these cells together so it doesn't mess up when I like want to delete columns or something like that any case I'll keep that for now I'm just gonna close this back out we'll, we'll take a look at more of that at that kind of formatting in the future but just when you look at a kind of an overwhelming report like this uh, it's pretty easy to format that I, I know it you have to do it outside the system you can't collapse it within here but it's really not too cumbersome uh, to do that now if you do want another report however to, to be breaking out like the, res the restricted items here and have this report be a little bit smaller by not having the subclasses then we can use the other method we're doing both methods here and that's to track it by the sub the sub customers so you could say instead of having and you could just keep it as restricted column here and then say I'm going to track the sub customers with another report and say if you want more detail we'll go to another report for the sub customers and run basically the income statement by customer. So now I'll run the income statement by customer and run that report. And so then we have our information 
and there's the government grants uh, here. Now this will show all customers, so you'd wanna customize this report and just pick up those items that are, are going to be related to the restricted customer items that we set up, basically the parent customers, and then you'll have all the sub-customers within it. So if we then go back down, I wanna filter this. We're gonna filter this by customer. So I'm gonna filter it by customer. I got the customer checked off. Then if I select the drop down and then uh, scroll down, we've got our customer types. So we've got the government grants. Uh, we're gonna need that and the restricted time. And you may as well just check all of them off because once again, it'll show the detail uh, of those items within it. So we got the restricted time. And so those are gonna be the items. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run that report. And then we'll have the details. So we have the government grants, uh, the government grants, and then it's gonna give you the total government grants. And then we'll have the same for uh, the time. So once again, it'd be nice if you could just see the totals of this report, be able to collapse the detail and just see the totals for the two categories that you have here. But you don't have that function, that format, that format here. So you could condense this report. And again, you can export this to Excel if you so choose, and then just show the totals uh, of these restricted items without, without the three columns, without the detail of them. The bottom line is this total of the restricted he items here, this 167,000, I'm gonna duplicate this report. Or right, let's go back to the balance sheet and then open up another income statement. Go to the uh, hamburger, go down to the reports. We're gonna open up another P&L and just take a look at the side-by-side -side comparison of these two formats of the income statement or the profit and loss. Then I'm gonna open up another profit and loss report. We're gonna run it for the same date range. That's gonna be 010120 to 123120. I'm gonna close up the hamburger. I'm gonna run that report. Then I'm gonna show this report for the classes. So I'm gonna hit the drop down. I'm gonna choose the classes, then run that report. So we're gonna break this out by class. Now you can see the restricted items here, the government grants and the time are gonna be the subcategory of the restricted items. And then the total restricted items are that uh, 167,000, 167,000. That matches the other format that you see on this report here as well. So right, the 167,000. So in other words, if you wanted to make this report a little bit smaller by classes, you can then not include the classes, all the detail for the restricted items, just get to that 167,000, you'll only have one column for it. And then you can find the detail of that 167,000 by running this report. And then you could, you could use that method if you so choose, or you can, you can have the detailed method uh, within the classes here. So there's a couple options to, to uh, track this information. And, and again, your goal, what you wanna do is set up a system where you can give it in a, in a more refined kind of format, like we say, and then expand on that format when you're presenting uh, the reports to say like the board of directors or something like that. So in any case, that's gonna be it for now. Let's get out of here.